Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your favorite cow. Man, I really like this shirt. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to properly put together a song with over 30 sounds in it using the further public produced Moose Roger single, The Wave. But hold up, before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button. Each like goes a long way in supporting the channel. It really makes a huge difference. All right. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So the main thing you want to take away from this tutorial is balance. The concept of balance in production. If you're going to be mixing a song like this on your own, the main thing you want to focus on is to get the levels right and to determine what element of the beat needs to take center stage and what element of the beat needs to play a supporting role. Regardless if you're going to be sending it to an engineer to be mixed like it is with this song, you need to pick specific sounds that are going to be complementing each other as well as fit the overall vibe of the track. So the case for the wave, it fits more of a house hip hop party vibe. So I needed to pick specific sounds that kind of have like a chill, but also exciting, laid back, but fun sounding as well. I started with this drum sample, this laid back, boom bap, kind of a 90s throwback feel. I lowered the pitch by two steps. I set it to complex. So the difference between beats and complex in Ableton is when you pick a specific clip and it's on beats, it will have this kind of pulsing distorted sound. Some people you might want that, especially in the lo-fi scene. If you want more of a smooth sounding texture, go to complex or complex pro for an even smoother texture. And the option will be right down here under the warp and the BPM of the sample. So let's go on to the the bass line. The interesting part about this bass line is it doesn't start on the one how it usually is. It actually starts right after the snare and it has a kind of a walking bass feel to it and it moves around the scale having to be more playful which is which fits the vibe of the track. So I added a decapitator effect from Sound Toys. It kind of give, it gives a really thick Bass tone. I love it. Let's move on to the keys. Boom bat beat, groovy bass line, electric piano. There. Peanut butter and jelly. And these kind of chords, you know, ninths, sevenths, um, inversions. They're usually jazz voicings. So jazz has a really laid back feel, which is perfect for this kind of jazz hop, 90s throwback vibe. We have three sounds. Let's get into the fourth sound. And one thing I really enjoy doing with chords is adding pads or synths on top, but it's a duplicate of the same chord progression. hear it now. If it's not there, you, you notice. But if with everything else there, it kind of goes in the background, but it really adds this nice foundation. On um, this pad that I labeled 40R pad, I love this pad because I use it in a ton of beats and it kind of adds a little bit of an upbeat feel. Um, you'll hear what, I'm, what I mean. I don't know, when I heard it, it kind of has a bit of like a upbeat guitar kind of reggae sound. Gives the track a bit more movement, a bit more size. Again, I, I want to add a lot going on because this is a house party, so I want a big sound, but I don't want an overwhelming sound. So at the end of the day, like I've said in previous videos, I learned that everything in the beat needs to serve a purpose, and I'm going to add it. It needs to serve that, that purpose. Let me just play this next simple one. So if you notice, they are primarily chord tones. Hey guys, Future Me here. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button. I have a lot more interesting tutorials on the way as well as more from my Collab Cal series. So please make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for that. All right, let's get back into the video. The next element is more of an ornamentation. Ornamentation meaning just adds a little bit of you know, garnish. Thank you. 
what he's saying in the song is very, you know, spacey. He's a little bit drunk, he's a little bit tipsy. So I really wanted to create a real hazy, kind of a smoker anthem kind of vibe. So you kind of need these synthesizers in there. There's one more synth line, but that only happens in the chorus. I kind of also wanted to call back that G-Funk of the early 90s. Because that fits very perfectly with this kind of laid back house party vibe. You know, that whole era was strictly about that, so. With the synth lines, I wanted to create space. So if you notice here, that first synth I played is panned to the left. And that little twinkle thing is panned to the right slightly. So again, to create space that kind of envelops the drums and the bass in the center. And to create another element of texture, another bit of laid back feel, I added some guitar to it as well. And there's two guitar parts, one for the verses and one for the chorus to kind of differentiate between the sections. And the guitar part for the chorus added a wall guitar pedal. It's not gonna be a For the Republic beat without a sample in it. I chose different uh, parts of the sample for different points in the song to kind of keep it fresh. Still sounds like a legit trumpet line even though it is reversed. For trumpet samples, uh, reversing it actually doesn't sound half bad and actually sounds pretty natural. But it still has that like ethereal reversed um, sounding effect. And this is the second chop that happens a little later on in the song. And this is the third chop. And for all the sample chops, I tried to recreate a phone effect. So I pulled up Fat Filter. Then I added a preset reverb from Ableton Concert Hall and a preset saturation called Blue Drive. The reason I take out a lot of those lows and highs from sample is because I already have a lot of textures going on already. So I don't want a lot of that interfering with the rest of the mix. Alright, so let's get into some of the one shots that I added for the track. I added this, uh, what I call the boing sound. There's a riser thing. These vocal chops. And this other one shot vocal that I actually sound designed myself. And this recording of um, glass, you know, when people do cheers, that I recorded myself actually to kind of simulate a bar or party scene. And for the most part, these one shots are more like ornamentations. I don't add them throughout the entire track. I have them here and there to kind of have the track moving and to hold the listener's attention. A huge lesson to be learned from adding these kind of one shots is the concept of arrangement. Like I said, I'm not having all these tracks playing all at the same time. It would just be very chaotic. So if I'm going to add a new sound, I'm going to take a sound away. It allows the track to continue to develop and almost feel sort of alive, like a party. The only exception to this rule is during a chorus, where the track is most exciting. And you kind of want this big rush of all these different elements coming at you at once. However, I did add this one party ambient sound effect throughout the entire track because it won't be a party without people chattering and stuff. Now on to the vocals. Actually, Moose is very picky when it comes to how he wants his vocals. So we actually do a lot of the vocal processing during the production stage, such as the pitch shifting or the auto-tune or the panning. We'd rather do it ourselves instead of having the engineer do it because then it just speeds up the process. We know what we want. The way I like to arrange my vocals in a project is to separate each bus by the different sections. I'll have one for the verse, one for the ad-libs, the secondary ad-libs, hook with auto-tune, hook with a lot of auto-tune, a vocoder, how the verse sounds by itself. I was mixing with a vixen thinking visions of tearing her clothes off. The ad-lib to that. Her clothes off. 
again this is supposed to be a party so this is supposed to be a lot more people involved so it would be sound very empty if it was just one ad lib answering him and now we're on to the hook during the verses it's just gonna have one vocal line but during the chorus it needs to be big it needs to be explosive so there's gonna be a lot more vocals involved so these are the vocals from the hook with the auto tune cruising through Houston we vibing we vibing we vibing and now here is the vocals with the vocoder added as well cruising through Houston we vibing we vibing we vibing moving as a unit we riding we riding the wave and another thing that we really like to do is to add raw vocals so non-auto-tuned vocals to the hook as well to kind of add that contrast Cruising through Houston, we vibing, we vibing, we vibing. Moving as a unit, we riding, we riding the wave. However, for the second chorus, we added a second layer of auto tune harmony and a second vocoder line as well, just to make it much more explosive for a grand finale. Cruising through Houston, we vibing, we vibing, we vibing. And for the part that goes faded, we faded. Moose actually did multiple takes of that, and I think you also have me in there saying it as well. And during the engineering stage, the engineer recommended some girl to sing the chant as well. So we have her in there during the final master. Faded, we faded. My state relocated, faded, we faded, my state relocated. During the hook, I added these vocal recordings of, you know, Moose laughing, other ad-libs from the album, as well as me saying some stuff as well to kind of create that ambience, to kind of create that, yeah, we're having a good time, we're all chilling, we're all partying. And they add more excitement because you hear other voices beside Moose. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey! Yo, that's crazy. Yo, it's lit. <laughs> and I believe that adds up to 30. All right, guys, that's going to do it today for this tutorial. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel because next week, as part of the Collab Cow series, I'm going to be interviewing Moose Raja on this channel. I've known him for a really long time. We've collaborated on a lot of songs together. And it was overall a really dope conversation, as most of these interviews tend to be. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Boom, boom. Out.